Hello and welcome to another study in the Word. I really believe you're going to be very interested in today's study, and I hope that you'll just drop everything and just really get your Bible and sit down because today we started yesterday a study about Satan, his temptations, his schemes to destroy you, and what we're going to be studying as we continue today, we're going to see the will of God versus the will of Satan, how Satan ha is destroying the people of the world, how he is destroying people in, the, in, in, in churches today, how the powers of darkness have, have got into the church, and uh, I believe we'll just begin with some scripture here in Ephesians 6. And one of the main things I would like to really point out today is how Satan has deceived us and deceived our ancestors and how we have misleading oracles today which cause us to do the will of Satan rather than the will of God. And as we're doing the will of God, he is working death in the whole bunch. Now, folks, if we're, some, if we're sitting in some kind of position like this and we're some kind of spiritual darkness, I pray to God that you love the Lord enough that you would let the Word of God tear down any traditions or idols or any spiritual darkness you're walking in. Now, you listen real carefully to the Word. You have your Bible with you here as we just look. And I'm going to begin in Ephesians 6, verse 11. Now, we are warned right here to put on the full armor of God. It didn't say part of it. It said all of it. And uh, I'm telling you what the armor of God is really, holiness and righteousness. We put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm. You're going to stand in the Word of God, and you're going to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle, we have a struggle in the spiritual realm. And if you're walking in the wisdom and knowledge of the world, you're not going to understand the fear of God, and you won't understand what's happening in this spiritual realm because you have to have the wisdom of God to understand what's happening in the spiritual realm. For those who walk in the form of godliness do not have this, uh, this knowledge, and that's the reason the powers of darkness in these scriptures are left out dealing with the powers of darkness because anyone who walks in the form of God, there's no way you can deal with the powers of darkness until you're ever learning and never, ever, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth until you're... You're, you're, you separate yourself from traditions and doctrines that do not conform you to godliness. Now, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, against the powers, and I want to remind you, they kill, steal, and destroy. They're against the world forces of this darkness. They're against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, your Bible warns you and I and it's warning those who walk in the form of godliness today, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to, it's talking about resisting the devil, not ignore the devil, that you may be resist in the evil day and having done everything, everything to stand. Now, I want you to be aware of, folks, that where we are today, some... We've got to let the Word of God lead us out of spiritual darkness. And when this Word of God, uh, you know, the, the, what I, the people walking in the form of God is most of what's called church today is so far removed from what your Bible says but that the church of Jesus Christ is and where it's supposed to be walking. is as much difference in daylight and dark. And if you are walking in this kind of form of godliness, you let the Word remove, uh, tear down these strongholds and tear down these traditions, and you decide to love the Lord with all your heart. Because right now we're waking up from a nightmare. I want you to know the whole bunch has been asleep. And a trumpet is blowing, and the Lord right now is saying, get ready. In other words, all of us who've been walking in the form of godliness, he's saying, be sanctified, purify your hearts, the, get ready for the bride, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that he is... He is, uh, uh, He's saying, come out to meet the bridegroom. And those who are wise and have a wise heart love the Lord with all the heart. 
and other things do not have their hearts like peace and safety and traditions and men and things of that nature, they're going to hear the Word of God. They're going to love the Lord with all their heart, and they can be led out of spiritual darkness. They're the wise virgins. But the foolish virgins, all they want to hear peace and safety. They're at ease in Zion. They have a lifestyle in this world, and their mind is set on earthly things. And they're upset and they're programmed with controversial questions and things like that to be upset and resist any new light because they've made their commitment to a structure, they've made their commitment to men and doctrines, and the Word of God is not going to lead them anywhere. That's the reason they have a foolish heart. I want to read something to you in Matthew 25, and I want you to see this. Then the kingdom of heaven be compared to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And we know that... Uh, the lamp's supposed to be a light into our feet. The, um, the Word of God is. And the five of them were foolish, and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil, no spirit with them. And that, you know, someone the foolish heart, it walks out to form a God, and it doesn't have to be led by the Spirit of God because they already have a false security. But the prudent took all. They're led by the Spirit of God in their flask along with their lamps. Now, while the bridegroom was delaying, and that's what has been happening, he's been delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. The whole bunch of us folks, and I hope you see this, the whole bunch of us have been asleep. Everyone, the wise and the foolish. And, but at midnight, there was a shout. Folks, uh, this midnight, Midnight is the most, is, is the darkest part of the night. Midnight is right now. It's a great, one of the greatest times of spiritual darkness they've ever been right now. That's the reason why uh, people hear truth right now and the things that Jesus is saying, and it sounds like a cult because those who are walking in the form of godliness are, are, are so surprised and shook up by something. Anyone who read the part of the Bible, it's, it's so... Uh, where the Lord is talking to us to be sanctified and walk in the form, uh, to walk in holiness and righteousness. But at midnight there was a shout, Behold the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying right now. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their light, lamps. And a foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil. We need the spirit. They can't find a way. For our lamps are going out. We can't see the way. And later on, I'm going to show you something about their light lamps going out in a later teaching, but I want you to tell you right now that it's a time of mid midnight. And folks, I want to tell you right now that we're waking up from a nightmare of spiritual darkness. Now, you look for the Word, and you let Jesus be your source, and you look for the Word, and you let the Word of God lead you out of any spiritual darkness. You hear the Word, and you be sure the Word's in context, and it's in balance, and you let the Spirit of God, you let Jesus control your life and not men. See, right now, you just, uh, you listen for the voice of Jesus. And you only receive, I'm not your source. The only thing you receive from me is what you hear Jesus speak through me because Jesus is your source. Jesus is Lord, not men. And so, let me just remind you before we get into this thing about the powers of darkness, that uh, exactly, to renew your memory, and your mind exactly where the Lord has told us to walk. We've already seen in John 15, 12 and 13 that Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. That's a divine nature to have the love, to love one another with the same love that Christ has loved us. And of course, that's what the Lord perfects in us through sanctification. And we saw in verse 13 that greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what we do. We lay down the old cursed nature, the old... Uh, flesh nature of Satan, it has to be put to death in order that we can walk in the love that the uh, Lord demands of us. Of course, now, uh, if you walk in the form of godliness, you have to ignore this script, this commandment of Jesus right here, and, uh, uh, and you, content to, you have to ignore it in order to, to walk after a form of God is continuing to walk after the deeds and works of the flesh. Now, I want to ask you something. Since this is in your Bible, in John 15, verses 12 and 13, that we're to love, lay down our life and love one another as Christ has loved us. Is this the kind of Christians that the church is producing today? Well, then you're going to have to agree. You're going to have to say no, and then...